President Obama in Russia says he thinks he can uh, reset relations with that part of the world. Uh, Savannah Guthrie traveling with the president with his exact agenda. What's going on, Savannah? Hey, Dylan. Well, the president is meeting with President Medvedev today. He'll see a Prime Minister Putin tomorrow. They've got four hours of meetings today, and the issue that's number one on the agenda is this new START treaty, the Nuclear Arms Reduction Treaty. The old one actually expires in December, and they're hoping to get a new one. And we're not going to see the treaty today, but they're hoping to have a framework for progress. But the issue that's really looming out there has to do with missile defense. The U.S. has these plans to build missile defense in Poland and the Czech Republic. There is no issue that is more in Russia's craw than this. And it's really one of those areas that you wonder how negotiators are going to come to agreement on. Uh, the U.S. really wants to separate this whole missile defense issue away from start. But Russia wants to make it part and parcel. So there's a lot of delicate diplomacy to be done here. <coughs> Excuse me, Savannah. Is there anything that is expected specific on, on nukes other than rhetoric? Well, I think we'll get, again, to use the Diplo speak, the framework of an agreement. I'm not sure we'll see numbers today. I mean, there have been numbers out in the press that, I mean, the current start, I think, calls for 2,200 warheads for each country and that you might try to get it down to more of the 12 to 1,500 range. Not sure, though, if we'll see concrete numbers in terms of uh, the nuclear warheads or delivery vehicles today. We are also, I think, going to hear, though, about a deal wherein Russia is going to allow the U.S. military to transport supplies and weapons and troops on Russian territory. And the U.S. will portray that as a pretty significant development. That's for the, its efforts in Afghanistan. When you are around and think about and see Vladimir Putin, do you think of Darth Vader? <laughs> uh... I really can't say, you know, um, but I did appreciate you playing that music. But, you know, Putin is very popular here. So you can do that whole Darth Vader thing, but the Russians would not appreciate no, it. No, I know. I know. That's why it's safe for me to do it from here in New York, I think. Uh, Savannah, uh, enjoy yourself. We'll yeah. talk to you soon. Uh, on the set with us, Mark Ames, I described him to you earlier. It's nice to see you. Uh, nice also you. joining the conversation, Ambassador Jack Matlock, who's a former ambassador to the Soviet Union from 87 to 91. We also have some maps here that we'll flip through that just sort of basically illustrate what we all know, which is this, what Russia, what the Soviet Union was, what the Soviet Union is. You understand that they are largely capitalized. They get their money by selling oil to the rest of the world. They've got a lot of it. They make a lot of money when oil prices go up. Um, your sense of, and before we get into the details, Mark, your sense of the Russian government's desire to, to, to have a relationship with the U.S. and what, what, they, what would be the perfect Russian relationship with the U.S. if we were to ask them? Um, I think what the perfect uh, relationship would be that um, we would be basically stupid and weak, <laughs> you know, I think. And, uh, and, 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 you know, what happened under Bush was that we massively overextended ourselves. Um, militarily. Yeah, militarily and, and, in every, and in every single way, economically right. and so on, and uh, made promises we couldn't keep and so on. And, um, you know, the reality is Russia's power expanded greatly under Bush. Uh, How so? Ten, well, because look, of the ten money? Ten years ago, they were, yeah, the oil helped out a lot. But our decline helped them rise up as well. And that's why I mean that. A it, Ambassador, do you share that uh, belief? Well, to a degree. But I think that our, what he calls our decline was caused by a series of, of mistakes. I think our policy in many respects seriously mistaken, and particularly in regard to Russia, uh, which doesn't mean they didn't make mistakes as well. They did. So the bad relationship, uh, both sides bear right. some of the responsibility. So it, it, do you agree with Mark's characterization that the ideal r relationship between the Russians and the United States would be one in which the United States are dumb and weak and, and the Russians are in In other words, that, that's what they're aspiring to. No, not to. at all. I think both sides need to be smart. And both sides need to understand that their basic interests are not in conflict and we're not going to solve the problems in the world today if we don't cooperate. Where do you believe that the is where wisdom lies. Where do you believe the mutual self-interest of both parties, the Russian government and the U.S. government, where is the, the common ground? First of all, dealing with nuclear weapons, which is the greatest threat to us. We and the Russians have over 90 percent in the world. If deal with that between us properly, then we're not going to be able to keep others from getting it. Yep. These are major issues uh, of security. Second, terrorism. Uh, their enemies are the same as ours. And that's why, by the way, they are uh, letting us uh, uh, right. supply the troops in Afghanistan. Yep. Third, uh, issues like the spread of uh, like global warming, 
uh, environmental. Sure, the fact uh, that we all live on the same planet. These are all international, and Russia is big enough so on, that uh, you can't solve them without it. Finally, on missile defense, we both would be better off if we cooperated rather than looking at it in a, cooper- in a yeah. competitive way. Uh, you're not. I, I, yeah, with missile defense, I agree. I think the other ones are more our concerns. I don't, you know, we're not going to go to nuclear war, most likely, now, the way we might have under the Soviet Union days. Um, but I think the, the, miss- the anti-missile system is a really big issue for the Russians. And I remember in 2006... Uh, there was an article that came out in Foreign Policy magazine uh, by two American academics in which they uh, argued that if we set up the anti-missile system properly, we would actually be able to achieve first strike primacy. That is, we, could, we would be able to successfully launch a first strike on Russia and not worry about a retaliatory strike. And that sent the Russians absolutely crazy and ballistic. And... Uh, that's why they don't want us to put the, missile, the anti-missile because system then, in Poland. Because then, then that, the, the nuclear race is, is complete. Very quickly, tell me why it is, Mark, that you saw uh, parallels or, uh, in the way the Russian economy was functioning and what you see here in the U.S., in brief. Well, basically both are oligarchies. I mean, th- there's a small clique of incredibly wealthy, powerful people who are also hooked up with incredibly powerful foreign interests who control now our... Uh, you know, our fiscal policy. And who in America do you view, or what, what communities in America do you view well, as Wall the oligarchy? I mean, the, so the, yeah, the, bank, well, the banks, banking community. executives, Absolutely. the people in control of the money have this, uh, too, uh, this incredible wealth, and it's unclear that they're doing, making the wealth at this point by creating value for anybody else. No, they're, they're, they're parasiting off of the taxpayers, right? right? And, and it doesn't seem to matter who's in control, Republican or Democrat. Right. And it's the same, you know. Well, it matters about gay marriage, but after that I can't find I, <laughs> exactly. I'm, new, I'm new to this, but it, they both are f- sort of in favor of taxpayer abuse. One is okay with gay marriage, one is not. Right, but in, in a sense it's as if neither of them really has a choice. They have a lot of, uh, you know, right. leeway in this because they both have to... Uh, serve the interests of these really powerful people. Right. And so taxpayers don't get bailed out themselves, but right. actually they have to pony up to bail out the rich. Yep. It's the same, it's, and, and that's kind of structurally how Russia is set up. It's run by an oligarch. Right. All right, listen, Mark, it's a pleasure to meet you. Ambassador, Thanks. thank you for the time and the conversation. Um, I'm going to have you back, Mr. Glad Ames. I appreciate here. it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador.